When we are combining this shadow pass into our final composite, it's good to be aware of several issues that we may encounter. Let's take a look at this very simple scene with just a few objects and the only light source in this scene is the sun lamp. I have disabled ambient occlusion, environment lighting and indirect lighting. When we render this, that's the combined pass that we get. Because this sun lamp is the only light source in our scene, we theoretically should be able to recreate this combined pass by multiplying the diffuse pass by the shadow pass. But let's take a look at what happens if we do so. Here we have the diffuse pass and that's our shadow pass. Let's multiply one by the other. And here's our result. At the first glance it seems identical to the combined pass. But when we take a closer look at the edges here, we see that we have some strange fringe. Combined pass and that's the diffuse multiplied by the shadow. Let's take a look at the difference between the two. I will add another mix node and change the blending mode to difference. And let's compare the combined pass with the product of those two. As you see we have differences and they all occur at the edges. The reason for this is anti-aliasing. We don't use the full sample because our goal is to be able to combine the passes that are pre-rendered. Full sample forces anti-aliasing to happen only after all of the passes are mixed together. But in our workflow, where we separate the render from the compositing, using the full sample is not possible. In our case, diffuse pass is anti-aliased, as well as the shadow pass, and then the results of anti-aliasing are multiplied together. And this gives different results than when anti-aliasing would happen after everything is combined. All of the problems occur in the areas where we have the sharp border between the areas completely in shadow and the ones not influenced by the shadows. Here we should get the sharp border. And those shades of grey that are present here in this area is the result of anti-aliasing. The same thing is happening with the diffuse pass. Here we have the color of the floor and that's the color of the monkey. Anti-aliasing mixed those colors together, so here we get something like this. And those colors are not the result of shading or lighting, but anti-aliasing. And that's why the math goes wrong in those areas. In many cases we should get away with those issues. As in most of our scenes we don't use just one lamp as our light source. We will use more lamps, we will use ambient occlusion or environment lighting. Let me quickly combine the environment lighting into this image. Let's add it with a factor of 0 0.7 let's say. And those issues begin not to be so much visible. That's of course not the solution to our problem. Those differences didn't disappear. But as you can see there are cases where we can get away with them. Let's now take a look at another issue. Here's our shadow pass. The idea of it is to be able to treat shadows separately from the diffuse. Diffuse is the direct lighting calculated as if the objects don't block the light, which is of course not physically accurate. But let's take a look at the diffuse pass alone. This is the colored diffuse pass as Blender gives us. Our sun is placed somewhere here and the light goes about like this. Here we should have the shadow because this object blocks the light, as well as here or here. But here we have the black color and this is not the result of blocking of the light by any object. It's just because this surface doesn't face any light source. So if this is the shadow pass, it should represent only the influence of other objects on our light. So this area shouldn't be black. Let's take a look at what happens if I add just a little light source here in this area. I have added the point light that has the energy of 0.001, so its influence is very close to zero. Okay, I decided to replace the point light with a sun lamp. The energy of it is as well very low, and I have pointed this lamp to this direction. That's the result if we render this, and this is the combined pass. Let's compare it with a previous result and as you can see there is in fact no difference. It's not 100% true because those areas here in the previous result are completely black and in our result right now they have some really low values. 
But let's take a look at the shadow pass. This is the new shadow pass, and that's the old shadow pass. So even though the energy that reaches those areas, this area or this one, is close to zero, the difference between the shadow passes is significant. That's the old shadow pass. And there is a discussion if this area in the shadow pass should be black or white. There are cases where this behavior is better, but in other ones we would rather have this area white especially when we are combining the CG elements with the live footage. But I will come back to it in one of the next episodes. Here, I only wanted to show you that that's the behavior without judging if it's good or bad. Okay, now let's take a look at the behavior of the shadow pass in the areas where the alpha is zero. That's our combined pass. Here, the alpha is zero. Let's take a look at the alpha channel. And here's the shadow pass. Those areas where alpha is zero are black and this will definitely cause problems, especially at the edges. In most cases, it's better to have those areas white because they definitely represent something that is not influenced by the shadow. And the easiest way to make them white is to add inverted alpha to the shadow pass. Let's do it. I will take the mix node, change the blending mode to add. Now let's add the invert node plug the alpha channel here and plug the result of it to the lower socket of this node. In many cases it doesn't matter if those areas are white or black, but we will have issues with this, especially when combining the CG elements over the live footage. We would want to create the shadow catchers and then just take the shadow pass and composite it over the live footage so that we have the shadows that are cast by our CG elements on those live images. We don't always want our shadow catchers to cover all of the area of the image, so then the transparent areas of those shadow catchers layers should definitely not influence the live footage. And that's the easiest way of dealing with this issue. Okay, now let's analyze a little bit different scenario. I have placed another lamp in my scene, so I have two sun lamps, both of them have shadows enabled, and if we render this, we got this result. In this scene, I have enabled ambient occlusion and environment lighting, but I have excluded them from the combined pass. So here we don't see any influence of them, it's just a direct lighting, which is the result of influence of only those two sun lamps. But I would like to be able to control the energies of those sun lamps separately, so I created two additional render layers. One of them uses only one of those lamps and the other one uses the second lamp. In both of those render layers, I have disabled ambient occlusion and environment lighting, excluded them from the combined passes. So this is just the direct lighting. Let's take a look at the diffuse passes. So that's the diffuse pass of one render layer and that's the other one. If we want to combine them, we could simply add them. Let's do it and see what happens. And when we compare the sum of the diffuse passes of those two render layers with the diffuse pass of the render layer that is influenced by both of the sun lamps, you will notice that they look exactly the same. So diffuse is easy. But is there any way to combine the shadow passes? That's the shadow pass of the render layer influenced by one lamp, and that's the shadow pass of the other render layer. And here's how the shadow pass looks like when we have the influence of both lamps. Unfortunately, there is no way to create such shadow pass basing only on the shadow passes of those separate render layers. Let's try to multiply them to see what happens. This is definitely not the same as this one. It's impossible to first combine the diffuse passes, then somehow combine the shadow passes and multiply one by the other. This will never give us proper result. We would have to do something like that. Take the diffuse pass of this render layer, multiply it by the shadow pass of the same render layer, do the same for the second render layer and add those ones. Diffuse times shadow. And let's do exactly the same for this render layer. And let's add them. But this way we don't avoid the problems here at the edges that are caused by anti-aliasing. In fact, the best way of dealing with those issues is not to treat diffuse separately from the shadows. If that's the render layer 
that is influenced only by one of the lamp and that's the one influenced by the second lamp and here we have diffuse and the shadows we have direct lighting the way of combining them together would be simply to add combined passes because they represent the full direct lighting so that's how it looks like this is the sum of combined passes of those two render layers and it's exactly the same as the combined pass of this render layer which represents the influence of both of the lamps together. If we create the combined passes of those render layers like this, we can now very easily control the energies of those lamps. I can multiply this energy, let's change it to multiply, by some shade of gray, and this way I am lowering the intensity of this lamp. I can also very easily push this lamp to some color. Let's make it bluish. When I am doing this, I get exactly the same result as if I changed the color of the lamp itself. Such combination and not treating diffuse pass separate from the shadow pass gives us very good results because the lights add to one another. And if this is the result of direct lighting of one of the lamps, it doesn't really matter why this area is black. Is it because it doesn't face the light or it's because it's covered by the object like in this area here? That's why when we are combining the passes together, it is good to treat the shadows as just a part of direct lighting. And here we are using the colored direct lighting, so it's mixed with the color. But in one of the next episodes, I will show you the ways to create clean direct lighting pass. We can create it using different render layers, as well as trying to extract this from the ones that we have. So this is one of the ways of dealing with shadow pass and we learned what issues we may have when trying to treat the shadows separately from the diffuse.